Welcome back Design Hackers. This is Dan Havey and today we are going to take a look at Sarah's question here. And what she did is she has a top header on her page that she made sticky to the top on scroll. And then she put in here uh, a couple of elements and one she had an about element and then she had it just scrolling down to a section. Where she was having problems was that the, the image on the page was actually coming up too high. And let me show you here, actually since, um, since Sarah asked that question, she actually changed it out and made this not sticky anymore. So I just came in here and I just changed the position to fixed so we can get an idea of what she was seeing. But what's going to happen here is as you click on her about button, okay, come on, we click on her about button, it scrolls up and this goes partially behind. That's because when it tells it to scroll up to the top, it doesn't take into account the 81 pixels here at the top of the page. So we come to this element right here. We're going to see, at least unless she changed it, this was 81 pixels high the other day. Okay, now it's 80, 85 pixels high. So it does not take into account for that 85 pixels. So what it's going to do is it's going to scroll this up behind it. And the same thing here, we'll click on process. And you're going to see here, it's scrolled up behind the element. So we'll just uh, scroll this back down. So it should be sitting about right here, but it's up behind here because it doesn't, again, take into account that height right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go jump into ClickFunnels, and I'm going to show you a number of different ways to do scroll. And then I'm going to show you a secret trick that I've actually never shown anyone and I've never seen anyone else use in the ClickFunnels community on how to make that scroll up and stop, in her case, 85 pixels below this so that it lines up properly. So the first thing we want to look at is just doing a basic scroll. And there's really two ways to do that inside of ClickFunnels. The first one is, and, and I, what I have here is I have a navigation element up here, and then I just have uh, some text elements right down here. So let's just go into the navigation element first. And the first way to do a scroll is just to go find the section you want to scroll to and just put a hashtag in front of it and put it in here. So when we click on features right here, it's going to scroll us to section 26784. Now how I built out this page is this top section right here is transparent. So anything that comes scrolling up, actually I need to go into a preview mode here to show you that, so that anything that comes scrolling up, because this is a section that I have sticky to the top on scroll, anything that comes up is going to go behind this here. So you can see this border on the top of this section is scrolling up behind those words. And then as we scroll up here, the same thing's going to happen and, and all the rest. So now in this element right here, this was section whatever the number was. So then when we click on features, that's going to scroll all the way up to the top. And you see when it does it, it just slams it up there. And I'm not a huge fan of that just slamming it up there thing. Uh, so in this case here, it just slams it up there. Now in the second element here, this is just again a text element. And all I did is I came in, I highlighted this text, and I clicked to make it a hyperlink. And then again, I just put that section number in there, that CSS ID selector. I just put that in there, and then again, what we're going to get there is the exact same thing. It just slams it up into place. Now, there's a second way of creating these uh, scroll features, and that is to name the element first, or name the section first. So we're going to come down here, and in this case here, we're using pricing. And so we have pricing, and what we're going to do is come in, we're going to click on the hashtag, and all I'm going to do is type the word pricing in here to indicate to me that that's the section, and then you always want to click on update. I also have one down here for order now, same thing, click on the hashtag, and when you're naming in any kind of code like this, a lot of times you'll put the two words together, no dash, make the second uh, first letter of the second word uppercase. So always click on update or it won't save anything. So now what this is going to do is we'll come in to the navigation element and we'll come over here and we got pricing and what we can do is when you come in it'll actually just have the hashtag there and if you click on this you can scroll down and it'll actually tell you down here what the names are and where you can scroll to. 
So we'll just click on scroll pricing and we will save it if we had to. And then let's go in and see what happens. Now if we click on pricing, it slowly scrolls up. But again, we have the issue because we've got this sticky section at the top. It goes all the way up to there, whereas we really want it to stop right down. Whatever, you get the idea. Right there. That's where we want it to stop. So again, if we do it as a link inside of a text, which I have here, again, we'll just click on that, open this up, and again, exact same thing, hashtag scroll dash pricing. It's always scroll dash whatever the data title was for that section. And again, so we have that here, and we do it, and it slowly scrolls up. It's over, I think, you know, probably about half a second is what it does it under. So that's, that's my preference in doing those, but we still have the problem, whereas we have not accounted for the height of this element right here, and here becomes the part where I've never shown anybody how to do this before, and that is you can actually call a JavaScript function from a link inside of I was going to say inside of ClickFunnels, but anywhere. You can call a JavaScript function from a link. So let me just show you how that is. We'll go back into the navigation element. And we'll come down here, and you're going to see here, it says JavaScript colon scroll title. Scroll title is the name of the function that I wrote. And then it has pricing after it in, uh, inside of parentheses and inside of quotes. So let's just take a quick review here of how you can do this. So the first way where it just pops it right into place is you just put in a hashtag, the CSS ID selector, that's, you just put that in the blank. The second one is to put in a hashtag, scroll dash the data title, in this case here it was pricing. And then our third way of doing this is we can go JavaScript, function name, and then the variable. And again, the variable is the data title Again, that we used up here, the data title that we want it to scroll to. And in this case here, I just put in order now instead of the pricing one. But again, that was the last one on the page. Or you could, um, so here, here I'm calling it scroll title and scroll selector because there's really two different ways you can do this. And so I made two different functions. I'll show them both to you in a minute. One is where we use the data title and we're going to scroll to that data title and you would put in order now and one is where you could scroll to a CSS ID selector like up here and then you would just put in that CSS ID selector and actually that is the much easier way of doing it as far as how the code goes so let me jump out of here and we will open my screen back up and now let's go into the tracking code to show you how this is going to work. So this top one here, this is for scroll title. If what you want to put in is the title, like the word pricing or order now, you would use this one at the top. If you wanted to just go off of the CSS ID selector, you would put it down here like this at the bottom. So again, let's just come back into our navigation element. And you're going to see right here, we're going to use the function called scroll title and we're going to pass in the word pricing. Whereas down here on the bottom, we're going to do the same thing, but here we're going to use scroll selector. Let me see if I can get back here. So we got scroll selector and then we're going to put in the CSS ID selector to target that element. It's going to both go to the same element. It's going to both go to the pricing element. Even though I have a saying order now here, I got both of these going to the pricing element. And so one is we call by the data title, one we're going to call it by the CSS ID selector. So now let's go back into our ClickFunnels here, into the live page, and there we go. We got the pricing, and notice it stopped this time right here. You got the red from the features element up here at the top, but this one stopped right where we wanted it to, right there. And so we'll do it the bottom one as well. So again, the top one we're calling it by the data title, the bottom one we're calling it by the CSS ID selector. And uh, we'll just, uh, see if you just pull it down a little bit, it'll go up real slow on either one of these. So it's just a timing issue. Like I said, it's like 
half a second, three tenths of a second, something like that. So now let's just take a look at that tracking code. And what we have here again, so we got the scroll title, so it's where you're going to put in your data title. And this is why I say this one down here is easier because this syntax right here gets a little funky. And it uh, gets, you know, it's just a little harder to figure out because you have to say, okay, we're looking for a specific data title. And then you have to take the title that you passed in here because what you had in quotes with the uh, brackets around it, you're passing that in as a variable. So where it said in, in there earlier where it said uh, pricing, that will come in and pricing will become title. So this would be the equivalent of this saying pricing right here. Okay, so it just brings that variable in. This is now pricing and we want it to be offset from the top. So what this is saying is when this function is triggered by somebody clicking on it, we want to come in, we're going to just find the entire body of the document and we want to do an animation and that animation is we want to scroll up to the top, or we want to scroll a certain element to the top of the page, I should say. So in this case here, we want to scroll the pricing element to the top of the page, and we want to offset it from the top, in this case here, 199 pixels. So the 199 pixels, I got that by coming in, inspecting this top section. Okay, when you inspect this top section, what you're going to find is so I right clicked here and it opened up this section here and normally it would be a section like this where it says container but because we're using a sticky section at this point we're sticking it to the top the uh, code is a little bit different so you'll see it here it'll be section whatever sticky wrapper and then this is the part we want to take a look at so we'll just click on this element and then we can come down here and we have to calculate how tall this is because First off, we have the element itself, which is 149 pixels tall, but then we have 20 pixels of padding on the top and the bottom, and we have another 10 pixels of border at the bottom. So you got 49 plus 40 in padding and plus another 10 is 199 pixels. Again, back on Sarah's, hers was only 85 pixels tall, 80, 84.59. So Sarah, when you do this, just try 84, 85, and, and you'll be right there. Uh, either one would probably work just fine. So that's where we get this 199 from. So again, down here at the bottom, where we pass in the selector instead of the data title, it's going to be the exact same thing. But as you see here, how you call this is so much simpler. You just got the word selector here versus all of this here. So it's actually easier to do it with the selector, otherwise everything exactly the same. And in this case here, we say take 500 milliseconds or half a second in order to do the entire scroll up to the top of the page. So that is really it. So we, we can set this up by using a JavaScript function, calling, calling, calling a function in our tracking code, and then running that function and having it stop uh, 199 pixels from the top. So that is it. If you got any questions, feel free to reach out.